<laughs> so I just had a light bulb moment and realized that if you're not out LARPing, you're not training. So go forth and LARP and LARP your freaking ass off and don't let anybody deter you from your LARPing quest. Because if your gear is in the corner collecting dust, why do you have it? I'll take it. Don't worry. And I will LARP the living hell out of it. Anyways, if you're new here, my call sign is Blitz. I'm the head honcho in charge here. And now that we've got the LARPing thing out of the way, I just want to state a simple fact. And that is this. There is no one size fits all survival kit. So please guys, stop trying to stuff everything you can possibly think of for one survival situation or 500 survival situations into one bag and one singular point of failure. Now, ooh, maybe that's not you. If it is, whatever. All good, I'm not judging you. So point is, is yes, there is foundational gear that is going to exist across any form of a survival kit, a survival loadout, whatever you want to call it. Stuff like the five C's, cordage, container, combustible, you're probably always going to have those covered. But beyond that, the gear is specialized for the mission at hand. There is a better way and it is called the line system. And this applies whether you're out LARPing and full on tactical gear like today, or if you're just out for a hike, or you're out for a couple days in the woods playing a guitar and singing kumbaya and hugging trees. The line system still applies. Now, the line system, very simply put, is a system of layers. And you add and remove components based on the mission at hand. And I picked this system up in the military, so it was just natural for this to bleed off with me into my dirty, nasty civilian life. So much so that people have commented on my videos and called me the tactical woodsman. And whew, honestly, that's pretty damn flattering. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I can work with it. That basically sums up the vibe and my mindset. So if you are sick and tired of trying to stuff everything into one singular bag to deal with all the different crazy survival situations that go through your brain, this video is absolutely for you. And then if you're just a regular tactical gear whore who's surfing YouTube and wants to see tactical gear and lots of it, I mean, you're definitely going to want to stay tuned. And then if you're anybody else who just wants to learn about the line system and how it can make your life better and make the world a happier place, then stay tuned. So before we have a look at all the tactical gear, mountains of tactical gear, let's just have a look at the everyday carry items real quick. And I just want to say that for the context of this presentation, everyday carry is just as you do on a regular basis. The items that you put in your pocket, sometimes people will call that first line or first tier items. For this, it's not the case. It's just your typical EDC and first line, second line, and third line are considered to be completely separate. So what do I have here? I got a heavy duty folder, got a bandana, got the Bic lighter with duct tape wrap. That's a must. Blistex, absolutely, totally a must. If you get chapped lips from dry weather, that's not cool. That sucks and um, doesn't look good either, right? Got that, got the Timex, got the paracord bracelet and a button compass around the neck. And that pretty much sums it up for the everyday carry. I may or may not carry a flashlight on me. I may or may not have a mini tiny first aid kit on me and you know, stuffed in a cargo pocket. It just all depends, but this is basic foundational items. Okay, so you saw the EDC. Let's go ahead and get into the good stuff, starting with the Wilderness Survival Loadout. Here's the first line. This is a load bearing rig by SSO, which is a Russian company and a top contractor to the Russian military. This rig has been in use all across the world for many, many years. It's absolutely bomb proof, such as any gear that's produced by SSO. And this particular rig, I've had this one for, I've lost track, maybe five, six, seven years, I don't know. But it's amazing, it's lightweight, it's comfortable, and it fits this purpose perfectly. My goal with this rig is to provide basic gear so I can just roll out alone with just the rig. No pack, nothing else, and that's obviously for 24 hours or less in the field. Now let's go ahead and have a look starting from right to left. So right here, I have the basic general purpose first aid kit stored in this dry case and then stowed away in the radio pouch. Then I have British issue canteen and cup. I think this is pattern 58, but don't quote me on that. Then the butt pack, which is also by SSO. In here I have military poncho, SBIT stove, food, socks, 
and I think I threw some Jolly Ranchers in there or something else. I can't remember. Uh, who knows? But whatever. Oh, oh, some coffee packets. But anyways, moving on to the last pouch. That's general purpose. Everything from pen and paper to headlamp and fire starters. Now, if the requirements change, that's not a problem. I have all the foundational kit covered in this rig, and then all I got to do is just say, okay, mission change. Cool. Let me grab my third line gear, which is maybe a pack like what you see here. My mindset with this was basically to break apart my 72 hour kit, store some in the LB pack, and then the rest you saw in that LBV. Now in this case, it doesn't have to be a pack of this size. It could be a smaller pack. Any smaller pack will work as long as it doesn't have a hip belt for obvious reasons. The pack and contents can be anything related to the mission at hand. You know, for example, tomorrow I'll be out. I'm hoping to get on the ground maybe about 1400 and I'll probably stay out till maybe, you know, 2100 or something like that and for that you know it's just you know half a day recon in a new wildlife management area so i mean i probably won't even bother with the ilby i'll probably just grab my hydro pack and that's it obviously what you just saw was not designed for any hostile situations but this next kit is 100 percent in that boogaloo mindset and i will tell you right now that if you are not thinking in that mindset at least for 50 percent of your survival gear and strategies then you're just missing out on the big picture. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into it, starting with the first line. Just like before, let's go right to left. First off, look at this. I have a giant open space here. What the hell is going on? Well, backstory on that, I had an alien gear holster here that was for the Glock 19, but it unfortunately would cant the weapon directly towards my leg. So I have this weird paranoia of shooting myself in the leg when I'm actually drawing the weapon, and I didn't like that. So I'm working on a Safari Land setup, but for now, this is just empty space. The actual first item on here is the Gerber Strong Arm, which, I mean, Gerber, right? Lifetime warranty, quality blade, and it's also a perfect fit on this rig. I can bend left to right and all over the place and it doesn't dig into my ribs which was an actual concern of mine but it seems to be working out so good so far now in the middle is a tearaway ifac which i absolutely love because i can access this with either hand so if you you know one one arm is immobile that's cool i can reach around with the other one so that's a nice little trick i picked up um, from watching um some videos on tactical riflemen because i will absolutely make it very clear that i have no combat experience with this kit at all but i do get out and i try to work with it and do as much as i can without pulling the trigger and getting in a firefight in real life because that's not cool and that might uh, reduce my survival odds greatly so anyways <laughs> moving on to the general purpose pouch i just have a multi-tool in here and a sealed survival kit and then the backup mags fast mags whatever you want to call them Got a big old fat bake light there because that's how I roll. The only way to roll bake light and then an extra Glock 19 mag. That's it. Simple and to the point. Now you could be at home enjoying a quiet evening, blasting holes in the man as he comes to the door or looting and pillaging the remains of civilization. And if you're doing any of that in any sort of hostile situations where people are shooting at you and you're shooting back, you have got to have a proper chest rig. That is the second line, at least for me. Got six mags up front, and on each side, you see the two SDS grenade pouches. Now, in one, I just have kind of like a hodgepodge of crap. You know, earplugs, face paint, mini notepad and pen, and um, a couple of Jolly Ranchers or something else in there. I, I have a serious problem with Jolly Ranchers. Anyways, the other one has the radio, and what I've done here is, you know, I don't have any push-to-talk options set up now or anything like that. I just threaded the antenna up here in the webbing to avoid any sort of damage. And I guess in a pinch, I could use the factory earpiece that ships with the Baofeng, but it is beyond crappy. It doesn't stay in your ear and it's uncomfortable as hell. So push to talk option sometime in the near future. If you guys are using any push to talk hookups with a Baofeng, let me know. Now, a quick note about the rig you see here. This is the Rhodesian Recon Vest by Eagle Industries. This for me has been the best balance of a lightweight chest rig with support for armor because this bib just folds up in here. You can actually put a plate and you can actually get some armor into this area. It's not gonna be as big as a full size plate, but it is still gonna provide you with protection to some very, very vital areas like your heart and lungs, which last time I checked are kind of important to keep operational. And then too, when you pop this bib up, you also obviously have molly webbing here where you can put a pouch if needed, whatever. 
This is also made of 1000D Cordura and it is also provided with a lifetime guarantee from Eagle Industries. So overall, a great chest rig and in the future plate carrier, yeah, for sure. But for now, this is working. And then finally, the third line. And in this case, the third line is my beloved Exo Mountain Gear 3500, which is a perfect fit with the chest rig because you know, I've seen people wear chest rigs in different ways. Me, I like it up high. You know, I, I don't like it low, like on my belly, like some beer gut. It's, that's just kind of annoying. So I like it up high anyways. And since I do, that means that this hip belt makes perfect clearance and it literally just fits together like it was made for each other. But anyways, that's, you know, that's one option. I can pair a hydro pack with the second line and first line. I could, you know, maybe use an assault pack or switch it up. There's just so many different options and you have that level of flexibility when you work in layers and you break the gear apart and you redistribute that weight. Okay, so what's next? I mean, hell, <laughs> should I start a GoFundMe? Because I have a lot of things that I need, like night vision, body armor, helmet, better comms, all that good stuff. Hell, maybe like somebody can just drop a pallet of green tip 556 on my doorstep. That would be awesome. So all that being said, listen, let's, let's, let's keep it real. You know, you don't scale up overnight with stuff like this. It costs money. It takes time. It takes experience to figure out what works and what doesn't work. But the most important thing is, is that you look at survival beyond just wilderness survival and you see the world as a place where you may actually have to use equipment like that. And that is a sobering thing to think of that you would ever be in that type of situation. But is it, in, it is entirely possible even in a privileged country like the United States. So I like to stay prepared as much as possible. This is definitely a work in progress. So I would love to hear your comments on how you guys do your load bearing vest, how you guys do your chest rigs, how you guys handle things, how you layer. If you're familiar with the line system, I wanna hear all that and comments, suggestions, critique, um, whatever. Hit me up, let me know how that works out in those comments. And just bear in mind that we layer every day on a daily basis. You know, you have your backpack for work, right? And you have things in your pockets. Uh, you know, there's a soccer mom at Disney with a frozen backpack and a purse and other things in her pockets prepared to take care of her kids. So humans, uh, you know, especially in the modern era, we're layering, th layering things all the time and we're using the line system even if we don't realize it. So why wouldn't we adopt this into the wilderness survival context as well. It just makes sense to me. So anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. And if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, please do so. I'll see you in the next video. Show your support for the channel by checking out the wide range of survival gear available at thesurvivaloutpost.com. We stock only top quality, rugged, tactical equipment and apparel designed to support any mission or situation life may throw your way. Any gear you've seen in this video is linked up down there in the pin post and be sure to check out the suggested videos for more real world survival content and training.